Hi, and welcome to the 2010 Michigan Pinball Expo. I'm Lewis Bedigan, and here we are speaking to... Gene Cunningham, I own Illinois Pinball Company. Okay, uh, great. Uh, why don't you tell us... Uh, sorry, pull the microphone away from me. Uh, why don't you tell us about, uh, you know, your company and, and what it is you do? Uh, I own Illinois Pinball. I mean, we own... We have bought Bally Williams, Capcom, Alvin G. Companies when they went out of business. We reproduce all these play fields back here, parts and different things. We're on the internet, people buy from us that way. This is sort of my hobby. I come to the shows and bring excess and extra things to sell that people need. I've been a collector since 1973. The company started going out of business in the late 90s, 96, 7 and 8 in there. And I started buying the parts companies up and the rights to make boards and other things. Uh, Probably the main core part of our business now, if you look behind you, is these boards. Uh, we remanufacture these that uh, they put in. The man that was just talking to me here a few minutes ago was buying a lot of replacement targets and things. Uh, he just redid this machine over here, uh, 8 Ball Deluxe, and that's got one of our play fields in it. So what do you think of uh, this expo? This is pretty good. This is their first one, and it's they've set it up you got all these people playing games and everything and then they got their tournament and they've got quite a few they've got people here from Chicago and other places that are gonna play in the tournament I don't play in the tournaments anymore have you so you competed in the past I've played in the past yes and how did you do not good, not good. Uh, if they had a seniors tournament I might be a little different but uh, I used to I got into the hobby and I just started buying machines and I got up to where I had 1,600 machines one time, which would fill this room twice. And I had an auction, we had an auction, sold some of them off, and I specialize in ballet primarily. I've got about 600 of them. And uh, when I don't want anybody to find me, I tell my wife where I'm going. I go down to business, I get down to the building, I got a heated and air-conditioned building, and I'll spend a couple hours, I'll shut my phone off, no sound, and work on a machine, get it playing, and, and people always ask me, well, can you do this? And I said, I, if I can't fix it, I'm sure I got enough parts or another machine that I can make it work. When did, what was your very first pinball machine? Uh, Jungle Princess. Which one? Jungle Princess. Jungle Princess. I who, made, who makes that? Gottlieb. I opened a skating rink in 1973, and by that time there was no video or anything. So the company put in a couple of pool tables, a jukebox, and three pinball machines. About two months after it was open, they come and said, Gene, we're here to change your pinball machine out. I said, well, what are you going to do with it? He said, we're going to take it back, shop it, re-rubber it, and we're going to sell it. I said, how much? He said, 100 a quarter. I said, take it to my house. Two months after that, they did two more. Into the first year, I had six. Wow. Then I started getting interested in them for the movie themes, the famous people on them, and the different stories, and I just kept buying. I'd go to auctions, and I'd buy a whole truckload. Wow. So... Now, uh, what do you think of the pinball? Uh, there's one over there that has a screen, Pinball 2000. It's, uh, I can't remember the name of the game. Um, it's got a screen that, that uh, reflects off the, graph, the glass. What, what do you think of that? Could that, could that have maybe saved pinball if it had come sooner? I own all the patents on that. You what? You I own all the patents on that. Really? Yeah. And that's new cores, and we're working together on making them. If you turn around and see this glass right here, that's the reflective glass that works. That's called Pin Game 2000. Was made the last game that Williams produced. They put, produced about 5,000 of Revenge from Mars and about 7,000, not exact figures, of Star Wars. Well, the next game in the series was called Wizard Block. And it's a kit game where you can buy the play field, the wiring, the artwork and stuff, and convert one machine to the other. So the new core guys came in. They revamped the computer because the computer in the Pin Game 2000 was made in 96, 97, and you can't, it was off the shelf, so you can't buy parts for it anymore. So they've revamped and come up with a new computer. In turn, then they use my patents for the game to, not necessarily to make it, but to be able to pro project it. Um, we are now working together. We just had a conference yesterday on uh, what they're going to do and how they're going to do it and then we're going to start getting costs together. I want to try to get the kingpin operation going and out of, the, out of the way first, and then we're going to work on Wizard Block. But then there's a following game after that called Playboy, all in the projection things. Uh, 
it's unlimited to where that can go. Uh, Williams got out of it because they figured it wouldn't make any money. But uh, right now, the way it is, you can buy one of the machines for you know, two to three thousand dollars. You'll be able to buy the kit for probably somewhere around five with the new computer, and you can convert that machine. And then you can every time you get a new kit, you can just take an older machine, convert it. Uh, I have the I have the original uh, wizard block in my collection. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So then what about, um, now we have, you know, like high def technology and 3D televisions. Have you thought about using, combining all of this stuff? No. No? How come? Uh, I don't know if you could combine 3D on projection. Okay, maybe so, not. But see, I mean, the projection is they appear like this, comes down on and reverse, it goes onto the glass. True. And you, you're playing from that end, and you see there. Have you played the game? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I like it. Did, I like it what What was the main thing you noticed on it? Uh, I just thought it was really cool and different that you could actually hit the aliens and everything on the. And screen. go right through them. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you look over here, see this guy playing this machine right here. See where the you have to the scores are up in the top up there. Yeah. Well, if you want to know what your score is, you have to look up there to see the score. Yeah. But then you lose track of what the ball's doing. Yeah. And the ball will drain down the middle on you. With the Pin Game 2000, the ball is traveling through the projection. So you've got your eye on it all the time, and the score is right there in front of you. That, let's see, is there no dot matrix? The other, the progression from this, the real types, then they went to the dot matrix. But it's still a couple of inches up off the glass, so you have to look from the play field up, and you still lose eye contact. So the Pin Game 2000 is one of the improvements on it. Very cool.